Okay, it says it's going. Yeah, I've got a message saying you're all right. Okay. Um. Anybody can hear this, please uh, make a comment and we'll be getting in a minute. Three people watching it, so. Good morning, Gay Henson. <laughs> Good morning to anyone who's watching, including Gay. Um, I'm Chick Conroy. I'm your guide on this walk this morning with ably supported two metres away by Graham Hutchinson uh, <laughs> over here. <laughs> um, Graham and I both live in Hearn Hill, which is uh, one of the areas adjacent to Brockwell Park. So this is our local park, um, where we take our daily constitutional during the lockdown period um, and enjoy the birds. It's uh, in the borough of Lambeth. It's a regular suburban park. Um, but as suburban parks go, it, it, it's not bad for wildlife and birds in particular. Um, so we'll be showing you around some of the bird life this morning um, and there'll be plenty of background noise from, from people who are taking a walk, walking the dog, etc, etc. Um, but here we go. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, the weather, yeah, on top of the roof there at the end there are two magpies um, and a pigeon just landed. And the magpies were uh, squawking away there. Um, and one may be about to take off. Is he? No. Yes. No. Oop, flicked his tail. Don't know. Yeah, there he goes. There he goes. Uh, we've got a parakeet coming over. Um, and in fact, there's a parakeet's nest just above me. You see that thick branch sticking up into the sky? Uh, there's a parakeet nesting in, in one of the holes there and just above the parakeets in this, where there's a smaller hole there's a blue tits nesting. Uh, peacefully coexisting I think. Um, I'll come down to earth now. Oh goldfinches just flying over. Don't know whether you heard any calls. The rain can't hear. Um, okay can anybody else hear? Um, Well, that won't help, will it? <laughs> if you can hear me, please say so. Is it or is it just the rain? Um, anyway, I shall carry on assuming that, that some of you can hear. Um, just where we're looking now is some uh, rhododendrons, which are in full flower at the morning, at the moment. Um, ah. Feedback from Marion. Live video was briefly interrupted and picture is now very distorted. Okay, sorry about that guys. Um, and, but Nigel can hear. Well, that's good. Um, so the problem is not at this end, uh, as far as the audio is concerned. Um, well, I can speak a bit louder, but I can, and, and Tony can hear, and Maria can hear, but the vision is bizarre. Right, picture not stable. All right. Well, yeah, we'll move on. I apologise for that now because um, we did a trial run about a week ago, and this area is sort of in a bit of a dip, um, so the coverage isn't so good here. Uh, and we've found that Vodafone was better than what, what was the one we were using? The No Two. But uh, yeah, it's it's sorry, it's not going to be perfect, but hopefully it'll still be. Well, it won't affect the audio. Uh, so here we go. Uh, just going to walk along one of the main paths now. Yeah, you'll probably find that the vegetation is particularly uh, poor quality. I think we've discovered that video just doesn't cope very well with trees with lots of leaves on them. Um, so we're walking along the edge of one of the ponds here, and in a minute we'll sort of t turn. 
I'll turn to, to the left and have a look in. Uh, but it's uh, got mallards and coots and more hens, the usual stuff. Um, and this tree coming up on the left, this one, um, it's full of feral pigeons. Uh, so here below me is the pond, which yeah, you can hear okay, but the picture is a bit fuzzy, says says Margaret. Uh, sorry, apologies. You probably can't see the the birds on the water, but there's uh, some young coots on the water. Swimming around just down below there. We found that already there's less bird song um, at this time than there was, say, two weeks ago. Uh, less birds singing, presumably busy fetching food for the young and so on. But I just heard goldfinch in the background. A little bit distant, you may not be able to hear that. And then, of course, the wren. We can always rely on the wren to uh, <laughs> to give us a nice live call. Um, we can hear a black cap. We're heading towards a black cap. Some of those are still in action. There does seem to have been a bit of a black cap, uh, well, it seems to be maybe more black caps than usual here, as others have noted in other locations. Although it could, of course, be something to do with us noticing them more, with there being less background noise. But you may, may be hearing the, the black cap now. He's just paused. Yeah, I should be able to hear that black cap. Which is in this direction. Magpie calling there. Um, I'm going to head towards some geese. Uh, and I'm trying to get something to Graham for can catch his attention. <laughs> I'm going to, Graham, I'm going to the geese here. <clears throat> Somebody's feeding the geese just ahead here. Nigel heard the black cap, good. And the wren, we can all hear the wren, I'm sure. Um, there's uh, some Canada geese and uh, there's a pair here have two goslings, or they did yesterday. Yeah, they've still got two goslings today. This lady's feeding them. And feeding the adult there. The wren reliably calling again. Uh, the, the goose has just seen a dog coming, so it's walking away. Uh, they do um, face the threat from foxes here. Um, I was here one afternoon and I saw a fox just trot past where that goose is standing right now. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, the fox has been seen sitting on along the edge of the pond here and on a on a little dead tree nearby, um, keeping an eye open for an opportunity to come in and grab one of these goslings. Um, yeah, there were probably more than two to begin with, so um, who knows, they may have already less, lost one or two. Um, and another threat that they face is from um, a heron, although the goslings are too big now, I should think, for, for the heron, but I don't know, maybe not. Um, But yeah, the, the geese know that we humans are generally pretty safe. Um, we've also got a moor hen, moor hen taking advantage of the food here.
Picture is a little bit better now, that's good to know. Thank you, Tony. Um, I think it's the green, the leaves on the trees that the video struggles with particularly. Um, anyway, you can hear some... Uh, I think a coot was calling then, I think. Um, Egyptian geese on the island. Ah, oh, Egyptian geese on the island. I don't know whether... Okay, straight ahead in the picture you can see a tree uh, with some almost dead branches um, higher up. And at the base of that tree is a little island, and on the island is uh, an Egyptian goose. Uh, I don't know whether you can see that or not. Um, and there, I, I was told that there was a pair of Egyptian goose here a couple of weeks ago with, with uh, two or three youngsters, and that one of the youngsters um, had gone into the top pond, which we'll, we'll see later, which is where the swans hang out and that the, the male swan had immediately killed the Egyptian gosling, Egyptian goose gosling. Uh, and they, they, do, they are known to kill Canada geese as well, inclu adults included here, because um, they see them as a, presumably because they see them as a threat, as a competitor. Hello, Angela Craft, glad to know you've tuned in. Um, yeah, so gosling's on the water there. I can hear the black cap, I don't know if you guys can. Um, and a great tit. And a noise I don't recognise, it's maybe a human noise. So we'll head towards where I just heard the black cap. A couple of mallards just below me here. Seem to be quite a few um, single male mallards around uh, for some reason. Plenty of wrens singing away. And the black cat just came in, but outperformed by the wren, I think. A couple of weeks ago, if we'd been here, probably we would have heard a song thrush singing. Graham has recorded it in this spot. Black cap singing. Two, at least two black caps singing. And the wren again. That black cap should be loud and clear despite the aeroplane in the background. In fact, I think I just, oop, yeah, somewhere over here. We won't see it, but, and a robin singing. And some of you may have heard the aeroplane in the background there. <laughs> I live on a road that's on, along the boundary of the park, so the back of my flat looks out towards the park and I can hear every morning, every day, I can hear a black cap singing out the back there, which is rather nice. I think it's the only uh, member of the Warbler family that we've got breeding here. Um, we did have in the spring uh, both uh, chiff chaffs um, passing through um, and I heard a willow warbler one day and I heard a reed warbler one day but they, they didn't hang around and we don't have any white throats here So fairly quiet just in this spot, 
We're walking past a small tree now where one week ago there was a thrush sitting on the top of that tree singing away in full sight but not this morning. <laughs> So, some feedback from Catherine that she's she can't get the video to work properly. That's unfortunate. Sorry about that, Catherine, if you can hear me. You, you've had two stretches of me talking, but nothing now. Oh. Hello, Jenny Collingwood. I just tuned in. Carrion crows in the background. There's lots of them in the park, as you would expect. Robin. Harakeets. Robin again just then. Oh, what's this? Probably a squirrel. Something moving around in the tree here. Or was it? It must be a squirrel that I can't. Yes, it's a squirrel. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so you can see, I mean, considering this park is, yeah, uh, uh, considering this park is, um, you know, in the middle of some fairly high density residential areas, right now it's uh, pretty peaceful, isn't it? Uh, there are little bits of it like this that, uh, don't don't get too overpopulated most of the time anyway. Uh, yeah, thank you, Tony. It does look lovely. Well, this year, Graham's saying this bit's nicely overgrown. So all along my left hand side here, there's all this vegetation which probably won't show up very well on the video. Um, and there's a pond on the other side, but there's a sort of quite a big overgrown area between us and the pond. So this is a good area for foxes to hang out. Uh, once I was looking, I was the other side of the pond looking across in this direction and uh, there were some ducks sitting on the wall at the edge of the pond and all of a sudden they kind of dropped off the wall onto the water. I thought what's prompted that and I waited and I watched and watched and then a fox's head popped out of the vegetation. <laughs> um, I've never seen any fox cubs in the park. Um, I don't know whether there's anywhere where they can have a, a den where, that they can access most of the time. I think I think it's probably problematic to be trying to bring up your cubs here just because of the lack of space that's, that you can hide in. Ah. Now I heard, I think I heard, a great spotted woodpecker just then. Just that monosyllabic call. Just above where I'm standing. I'm not 100% sure. Yes, okay. Some bad experience with the video, sorry. Um, the sounds clear. Well, that's that's the only thing I can control. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we do get great spotted woodpecker 
in the park, but I haven't seen or heard so many this year. Ah, oh, there's a blackbird alarm call. Maybe that's what I heard before, just the beginning of it. We also occasionally get uh, green woodpecker visiting the park. They tend to come, I think, first thing in the morning when there's hardly anybody around. I hope you're all enjoying your breakfast. I think Graham and I are going to have ours after the walk. I'm sure we'll both be going home to have a nice mug of coffee. And who knows, maybe something with the coffee. <laughs> Do a quick or that way or that way? This way, please. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Some people practice social distancing and some people don't. That was one of the good ones. Yeah, going back to um, carrying crows, there's lots of those, as I said. Uh, we've seen magpies as well this morning. Um, we do see jays here, uh, but not as often, and I'm not sure that they're nesting in the park. And occasionally, but again, I think that's a, a visitor to the park. One of the good things about the weather today, apart from the sunshine, is the fact that there's no wind, or virtually no wind, so that helps in terms of the quality of the sound. Oh, just saw a goldfinch. A wren singing. So this is a... What? Oh, two swifts just went over. Uh, you didn't see them, I didn't see them either. <laughs> oh, the wren's flown across. Still singing. Still singing, yes. The wren was singing in flight there as it flew from one tree to another. Uh, very, very kind of dominant behaviour. I, in the distance, I just heard a chaffinch. Yeah, Margaret, I think it's, I think I recall reading it's 50 hectares. Not entirely sure about that figure. Maybe that's too small. It's Lambeth's largest park, and I remember that much. So yeah, we're only going to see a, a fraction of it this morning, because um, there's lots of large open spaces which aren't so good for birds. Um, but we're focusing on the area around the pond so that we can bring you water birds as well. Um, I, uh, I can hear a chaffinch singing in the distance, so let's uh, head in that direction. Yeah, we've got the chaffinch, uh, goldfinch and greenfinch in the park. I'd say goldfinches are the most common. Yeah, Marion, I was saying about crows that um, we've got lots of carrion crows. We've got oh, uh, two geese flying over. Is it? Well, you could maybe hear them, just that hoarse noise. Uh, as I think that was two Egyptians flying over. Um, yeah, so plenty of carrion crows and. Um, magpies. Uh, we do see jays, but I'm not sure that they're breeding in the park, and uh, we also get jackdaw occasionally.
again not breeding in the pot. Here's the geese, woo! Yes, two Egyptian geese flying over. Hope you heard the call there. I was sitting on a bench in the park about a month ago and two geese flew over and um, and I looked up and one of them was a grey leg goose and the other was a Canada goose uh, flying flying together so it looked like they were kind of paired off um, We're, I've j Graham's just given me something to, to plug in here, uh, the, battery. the battery, just in case it was running low, uh, which can be a problem. Uh, nice yellowy leaves on the tree there, I don't know whether you'll be able to see them. Uh, right, Graham, where are we going? I think let's go to the swans. Uh, well, there's nothing calling up there at the moment. We'll go for ducks, swans. Oh, oh right. Yeah, we're heading down towards the top pond. That's the one I've just been walking around on, on the other side. Oh, yeah, I heard the chaffinch again. <laughs> But let's go towards the pond here. There's the chaffinch just sank. Yeah, was... Graham, uh, we're going to see some swans now with their signets. And Graham was saying there's only four signets this morning. There were originally seven. But actually, Graham, I noticed about three days ago that it went down overnight from six signets to four signets uh, and yeah so you know what happened to those signets they disappeared overnight probably fox I would imagine um, But the, uh, the, the adult swans, the parents, are very vigilant about guarding the signets, as you can imagine. So here are the swans. I'm sure you can see them and the four signets. Graham's chucking a bit of food in for them. Um, yeah, so no, no losses, no overnight reductions in the number of signets. Yeah, the adult wants some. Go on. I dare you, Graham. Put your hand out. <laughs> Graham's going to feed the adult. Uh, no. Oh, very well. <laughs> he can't reach down. It's a good excuse. It was hissing. It was hissing, was it? Oh, <laughs> oh right, right. The, 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 the food we've got is a multi-seed thing and... Uh, not specifically for wildfowl, so it may not. Uh... Probably. These um, signets, when if they all grow up, uh, if they all survive. Um, they won't be able to stay here in the park because there isn't enough room for for these two adults and another four. Um, so, um, what normally happens, I think, is that some swan charity, swan conservation charity, comes in and they 
transport the signets and you know move them on to a different location. Um, I'm, all right. Uh, Graham's just informing me that out on the lake, somewhere over that side, oh there he is, uh, there's a cormorant, but uh, I, I should suspect that the quality of the video won't be good enough for you to pick it out, it is a bit distant. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed the bike Angie, yes it is a nice, I'm wondering whose it is actually, but anyway. <laughs> All right, thank you Sharon for confirming. Uh, Wikipedia says Brockwell Park is 50.8 hectares, so I said it was 50, that'll do I think. Um, yeah, anyway, there's a cormorant on the far side of the pond. Just going to try and... It's dive now. There, you might be able to see it. It depends on the picture quality. It was just swimming right to left uh, a few yards away from the reeds and it's just dived again. Mallard. So we do, as I mentioned earlier, um, tend to have a heron around in the park, but we've not seen him today. Yeah, I was around yesterday. I don't know where it goes to when it's not here, actually. <laughs> um, but he usually hangs out um, in this pond uh, on the far side there, along the edge of those those reeds. Uh, uh, cormorants come up. Um, this pond is absolutely packed with fish, um, swimming around in shoals of a, a few hundred, uh, which I believe are rudd. So plenty of food for the heron and the cormorant. Um, oh, I just heard a chaffinch <laughs> in the direction we, that we came from. Um, we need a, a chaffinch to cooperate and just sing near to us instead of always singing a distance away. All right, we're going to wander on a bit further and hopefully get nearer to a, a chaffinch. Um, yeah, let's wander around the edge of the pond here. Goldfinch calling. I've been getting goldfinches on my bird feeder which is great. I love watching them. So. I, th I think, is this a black cap singing, Graham? Or... Yeah, it was sort of a bit different to begin with. <laughs> it was muttering. It was muttering, yes, it wasn't in full flow. We've kind of followed the swans here. A nice, nice male mallard just, just below there. Nice iridescent green on the head. And uh, here we have a tufted duck as well. Don't know whether you can see it. But, uh, we get plenty of those. Mm -hmm. uh, Chaffinch is teasing us. I <laughs> they sit, start singing when we've left an area. Um, there was this one just over there. <laughs> yeah, there he is. That's we've 
we've encountered another member. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, this is uh, Neelam. Neelam. Neelam, yeah. Who's from Kennington, if I remember rightly. Is that right? Uh, or you go to, Kenning to Kennington yeah. Park, anyway. Yeah. Near there, yes. Yeah, near there, right. But she likes she likes Brockwell Park. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you should be hearing that chaffinch that we are now walking towards. It just sang. And again. And again. And of course a wren. And there's the chaffinch singing. I don't think we'll see it. Uh, parakeet, black cap. And there, singing the chaffinch. I wonder if we'll see it. Oh, something's just flown. Maybe that was it. Oh, parakeet flew. Yep. It's somewhere up there, but I don't know. <laughs> Can't see it. Um, but hopefully you can hear it. I'm not getting any... There uh, we are. Oh, Nigel can hear the chaffinch. Good. And Margaret. Okay. Well, that, that's probably all we're going to get in terms of singing birds this morning. Um, as I said earlier, if, if, if we were here two or three weeks ago, we'd be getting song thrush, I think, as well, and, uh, which would be nice. Um, no blackbirds singing at the moment, uh, for some reason. Um, but uh, at least we've shown you or, or you've heard... Uh, some of what Brockwell Park has to offer, uh, bird-wise. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and, uh, Graham and I will say goodbye, um, and uh, hopefully see you again sometime. Um, bye. <laughs> and Neelam over there can say goodbye as well. <laughs> bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>